Hola. Hola, hola. Um, okay, let's start, right? Um, my name is Sebastian, and I have 39 minutes and 40 seconds to give my lecture, so I hope I do it good. Okay, I work at Anagrama, a design studio from Mexico. And uh, this is some of our work, just to show you guys that now, that I'm not a complete idiot. This was made for Rihanna. This is like the Armani brand, another, another project, another project, another project, and okay. So we're almost, uh, well, right now we're more than 40 people, but we're around 40 people. And we do work for clients all around the world, um, literally. Uh, we started eight years ago in Monterrey. Monterrey is, well, Mexico is a super centralized country, and Monterrey is the third city. So Mexico is the only really important city. Mexico City is not only the capital of Mexico. Mexico City, because of the size and the power and the population, et cetera, et cetera, it's like the capital of Latin America. And we are not from there. We are not there. So. What happens in Monterrey really, really, really stays in Monterrey. Um, so Mexico City is maybe like Marseille to Paris or maybe Durban to Juburg. Um, I don't know. 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 So Monterrey is not a touristic destination. Durban is beautiful. Monterrey is not. This is definitely not Monterrey. This is not Monterrey. This is not Monterrey. This is not Monterrey, and this is definitely not Monterrey. So Monterrey is an industrial city, tasteless, boring city. It's just... <laughs> this is Monterrey. What a, what a beautiful place, right? To get inspired and be creative. This is also Monterrey. Um, but also, this is Monterrey. And this, and this. And this is our office in Monterrey that looks like a cool design studio. And this is outside our office in Monterrey. <laughs> so I don't have an amazing curriculum like a lot of the speakers probably have. Um, I was a problem child with AD ADD. I was the worst at high school, awful grades in college, king of absences, fired from my first job within a week. And it was a design work, so imagine. Uh, also, I'm not that passionate about design. I mean, I like design, obviously, but... <laughs> have you ever heard Metallica or have you ever seen Pulp Fiction? Oh, that's a little bit more thrilling than Helvetica. For me, for me, for me. <laughs> so, it was hard to choose a major because I was only 17 when I need to ch choose what to do for the rest of my life. Uh, and these were the options that I had at, at that moment. Uh, film, industrial, graphic design, architecture, fine art, fashion design, music. And I went, uh, I, I picked graphic design. And the reason was because it was the easiest to get in. <laughs> Sorry. No physics exam, no need to relocate, and it sounded like the safest career option. So it has been over 16 years since I chose this path, and I still can't decide what I want to do with my life. That's the truth. So this lecture is for people do, who don't feel particularly passionate about anything. <laughs> <laughs> and who don't have any particular talents. <laughs> uh, also for disorganized, chaotic, and sloppy persons. But also, this lecture is for curious people who want to do as many things as possible because YOLO. YOLO. Yes, we're going to die. <laughs> and so we need to remember that every day we are going to die. <laughs> okay. This should be in some way motivational, but well. So this, 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 this talk its name going fast to nowhere because that's where I am heading to, apparently. Um, 
It's about personal projects, my side businesses, and Anagramma, my, my design studio, and how I make things move forward. Uh, this is an overview of some of the projects at this moment. I have new more projects that are in the side businesses and personal, and other ones of, of this as are already there. Some of these are in a very super initial uh, stage, and some of them are advanced, and others are up and running and being successful. So I'm not the leader of each one of them, because it's basically impossible. But I'm happy to be abroad of, um, in, in, in that many projects. Some creatives like me are not motors. We are not complete human beings. We're just like turbochargers. We have some talents for do some kind of stuff, but I'm not like a complete adult. I am a semi-adult or something like that. <laughs> yeah. So turbochargers on their own, they don't do that much. This is a turbocharger. But when you connect them to the right motor, that's when the magic happens. This image is not good enough, I know, but... So as a turbocharger that I am, I realized that I had to, sit, to stay connected uh, to motors, to people that have, like, real adults, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, collaborating with, collaborating with creatives is like the most amazing thing, and it's super fun, but it's even better to collaborate with people with different talents uh, that, are, that are not redundant or similar to mine, in my opinion. Because I don't know if you guys know this logo. <laughs> yeah. There is, act, there is people in this planet that actually like to open this program <laughs> and put numbers in it. They exist. So one of the few talents that I have is that I know that I really need help to, to do stuff. And in some topics, I really need a lot, a lot, a lot of help. So an anagramma began the day that I found someone to put order to my chaos. And that guy is Gustavo. He's an industrial engineer. It's the coolest photo that, that I found. Um, at that time, I needed someone to code the website that I was doing as a freelancer. But the more I hung with him, the more I realized how important his skills were. And it wasn't the skill codes, the codes, well, whatever. Uh, it was like the money thing. Like, he's organized, he understands how money works, he's a real admin inside the office. And because the rest of the people that I knew, or I know in general, are totally creative and they are absolute mess. They are amazing, obviously, but they don't have this talent. When I found this guy, I, 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 I thought, like, okay, I need to hold to this guy. So I lie him. I told him how beautiful the, our future together will be, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And he buy my thing. So I invited him to open Anagramma. And I knew that I was a good designer, but I wasn't the best. So I called Mike. Mike, in my opinion, is the best pair of hands in the earth. He's amazing. He's just amazing. He's a very, very good designer. And Mike, yeah, I already say it. Uh, he's super obsessive, OCD, crazy, crazy. And so these are some examples of the work that we have made together. This is one that is named Amado. Amado is a, it's a bakery and a candy boutique in Mexico City inside the Hyatt Hotel. So we took inspiration from the modernist style of architecture that was founded by Luis Barragan. Luis Barragan, in case you guys don't know, is probably one of the best architects that has ever been in the world. Pritzker Prize, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He's huge. And he is the, the father of a thing that is named emotional architecture. So after the modernists were obsessed with function, this guy came in and said, yes, 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 function, but also like uh, emotion and, and, and the vibe of the place, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we took imp inspiration from his super ultra Mexican color palette uh, and also with the Mexican textiles and mix it with this kind of 80s pop culture, normcore, I don't know, uh, aesthetics. 
So this is the sum of the visual like concepts, and this is the outcome of it. Like super simple, um, brightful, colorful packaging with a very simple uh, logo, just a typeface. Beautiful finishings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, well, this is another project, it's named Sofia. Sofia is a residential cooperative building in San Pedro. San Pedro is a municipality inside of my hometown, Monterrey. Uh, it's the richest municipality in Latin America, whatever that means, but it is. So this was like the, 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 the tower for the rich people, etc., etc. So our task, was, our task was to communicate luxury and sophistication. And we took inspiration instead of took inspiration from architects or buildings or et cetera. We, we took it from, from fashion brands. This project is it's a little bit old, probably five-year-old now. Um, and also we took uh, inspiration from the municipality coat of arms of San Pedro, probably the worst coat of arms in the entire world. <laughs> I don't know how this thing exists. So we develop a custom typeface based on Eric Gill's work. And we reference, or like at that time, this kind of design was, wasn't popular. Uh, like this old uh, kind of, of diplomas or old text layouts, et cetera, et cetera, like this one. That now you can see it everywhere in Brooklyn, I suppose, or in the rest of the world. Um, and so we mixed those concepts together. And this is the result of it, like this coat of arms that looks like retro, but at the same time clashing with modern layouts and, and, and colors, and this is the typeface that we designed. This is some brochures, it's a layout. More stuff, more st everything is in the website. And I have 27 minutes left, so let's go. Uh, so after a couple of projects, uh, we got the chance to work on an interior design project. Uh, that day, we invited Roberto to collaborate with us. Here's Roberto. Uh, so he's a great architect <laughs> and a friend of mine since childhood. Um, he's now a partner at Anagrama, and thanks to him, we can do projects that involve architecture, like this one. Uh, Conarte was a space to promote reading in children, and we were desperately trying to avoid the traditional library concept that for me it's only, only remembers me, like my childhood traumas and stuff like that, this kind of places. <laughs> uh, and so Monterrey has one good thing, one probably, <laughs> that is the topography, like the, the city surrounded by beautiful huge mountains. Um, and so we've, we, we took that and also we found inspiration in skate parks because they are cool. Uh, and so th the building was inside of an architectural landmark of the city that is named Fundidora. It's an old factory that has been totally restored, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so we, we s this is the sum of the concepts that we were using. And so we did this like library inside of one of those big uh, buildings. We didn't touch the original building because it's a historic heritage kind of a thing, but we do this kind of ramps and mountains inside of the place to the children that can learn or whatever, read. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't a good reader as a, as a kid. And also a, a theater in the backward, uh, this is another project called Bermeon. This thing sells extremely hot candies that are huge in Mexico, but it's ridiculous everywhere. Everywhere else, it's just ridiculous. This kind of stuff. It's just spicy, sour, and it's, it's not my kind of thing. But Mexicans love this kind of stuff a lot. So as any other project, we start for looking to references everywhere, blogs, magazines, whatever. And we choose to do like a very fashionable Euro European brand. But the, the thing with these Mexican products is like generally they look like this. Horrible. 
So our goal was to transform this commonly cheap, horrible product into a high quality delicacy because that was the goal of the client. But we get in stock because those worlds were very difficult to, to merge uh, or to put together. So we were stuck in the project and we were out on the smoking break and then a street vendor passes by and he was selling candies. In Mexico you can see this kind of stuff in the street. It's colorful and it's beautiful. I don't know about the hygiene level of it, but... <laughs> <laughs> so the idea born. We took the color palette of, this, uh, of the most sour and hot flavors of this kind of candies. And also, this is literally outside our office, like it's with graffitis and everything. And like Mexico and South Africa are, are, are very similar, like, uh, oof, how can I even start? <laughs> like social despairing, the whites being the little population controlling the rest of the country, a lot of things just. <laughs> okay. So, in my opinion, that's a wrong thing. Like, so there's a lot of revolution, uh, graffitis all over the streets and people celebrating Zapata, Che Guevara, all, all that kind of stuff. And so we took inspiration from those like stencils that you can find in, 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 in the street. And so there was the sum of the, this is the sum of the elements that we choose to use. And this is the result of it. Just simple, beautiful boxes with gradients and, and colors. We tried to make it to look super, super fancy, but at the same time, hot and sour and spicy. And the thing is, I believe that this thin light that we live, that it's within, between the favelas and this wannabe Monaco or whatever, Probably you guys have the same kind of thing here happening, like you can see a beautiful hotel and then you can walk, I don't know, one step and, <laughs> and you found uh, like a favela and the reality of the country, like this and this. Probably this could be any city here as well, I suppose. Um, this and this. But I believe that this helps us to build our own approach to our projects. It sounds like, because I believe that this clash and reboots our brains and helps us to come with new ideas. We are like trying to do the most pretentious luxury brand in our little beautiful black and white hipster studio. And then we go out and then we clash with the reality of the country. And I believe that thing helps us to just press the refresh button in a very deep, hard way. And maybe it sounds esoteric, but I, I believe that this kind of refresh thing uh, really works for us. Mexico keeps providing us with these constant clashes like you guys have it here in your own country. Um, and I believe that's, uh, that's something that you can use to be original or it helps to, to, to I really believe that in the creative process, the, the refresh thing, is, it's, it's highly important to restart the brainstorm over and over and over. And I believe a country like this or like mine or almost everything except Europe and other three or four countries uh, provide us with this bizarre benefit. So a few years ago, Anagrama got a new partner, Dani. She is Dani. A very cute, graceful woman, but also she's a fucking sergeant. She is in direct contact who, with the whole staff, the studio, she, she hires, and she's the one that runs the studio right now, basically. So, thanks to these amazing people, Anagrama works like a tight ship. I need to up, uh, update this because now we have m even more partners for more different branches. But yeah, the, 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 the main idea is that thanks to these amazing partners, we, Anagrama works like a tight ship, uh, and it's an amazing thing. So, Working for clients, it's, it's super fun or whatever, and challenging, but there, there's projects where we'll like to become more involved, like oh, only a logo, but this could be way bigger and better if we can only have the chance to do a little bit more work. 
but the limited scope of a conventional design project didn't work sometimes. So I started to look for opportunities to get involved in the projects, like literally investing or starting new projects. And so this is the part of side businesses. I'm going to speak only about two, I suppose. So some of these projects are uh, in collaboration with my partners inside the office, and some others are totally independent. One of this is this thing, Taqueria Orinoco. I'm a Mexican that own a taco place. The most cliche thing ever, but well, not every city in Mexico has a good taco joint. Imagine that, it, we are the country <laughs> with tacos. And in my hometown, we didn't have an amazing taco place. It's just unbelievable. Four million Mexicans living inside my city with, with not a decent taco joint. So we, so we, we decided to, to do it. So we were worn out with this super branding, everything that we were doing. So we decided to reverse our branding approach 100%. So instead of making a beautiful, cool place, we, we try to do ex the exactly opposite thing, using inspiration that lacks creativity, like this horrible place. Um, because the most delicious, the Mexican taquerias are the worst branding they have. It's just like it's some rule. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we do the opposite of a trendy thing. Those are like, very near my house. Um, so we decided to follow the, the traditional horrible taqueria design. It was also a good time like, to implement this kind. I believe that I'm, I'm, I'm sick of this hipster cool design, so I wanted to do another different thing. So we came for the next thing that is normcore that I'm also sick of it right now, but well, whatever. So this was the sum of the elements. And the beautiful thing about this project, it's we had the opportunity to actually design like the menu, items, the whole line, the logic of how things work. It was, and I don't know nothing about cooking, in, but I had some amazing partners that they do. But I was having an opinion anyway. So we do a, a, a lot of, of tasting and, and, and things, and the only thing that, ah, this, this is important, yes. I have been always jealous uh, with the hamburgers uh, because hamburgers came with, with french fries and tacos are always like a taco. So we like bring that kind of potatoes that are deep fried that looks more Mexican than french fries and you can put sauce on them. And so probably that's the only innovation that this taqueria have. From this, everything else is just nothing. This is probably the ugliest design that I have ever made in my life. And I am super proud of it. <laughs> it's horrible. Like the legs there are not even aligned. It's just, it's, it's, it's ugly. And this is outside the place. So this brand express the poorly educated taquero taste. Taquero is a taco man. The <laughs> The, the, um, how do you say? Oh, fuck. The slogan. The slogan is hygiene, quality, and service. That's our super smart slogan. And it's like everything is horrible, horrible, horrible. Just, this is a little bit cooler. This is the third branch. This is now a little bit cooler than the original. But in general, you can see the Coca Cola tables. It's like this is the regular furniture from uh, any cheap taco place. The food is unbelievably amazing, I need to say that. So the thing that we do here in reverse was instead of focusing into making a huge brand myth, we, we choose to make, make a humble brand and became insane inside the kitchen, like Japanese insane perfection. Um, and the, the place now has uh, three branches and it's opening more, et cetera, et cetera. This one is named Manos de Cacao. Manos means hands, cacao means Cacao. Uh, <laughs> so it's a chocolate factory, and we make chocolate bars from scratch, like literally from scratch. We uh, using uh, uh, cacao beans from every corner of the world, 
And the beautiful thing about this project is the, the, the leader of this project is a retired engineer that, that he sells his company, and he started his new dream retirement job that has become uh, Chocolatiero. And this project is amazing. It has a like, sustainable, socially responsible, delicious, creative. It has everything, in my opinion. So because the bin origin is always changing, the packaging is changing as well. Uh, it, it was like the, the packaging is like a canvas. Like, and so we have this layout that is steady. But it, depending from where is it, we're going to be changing like the, the, the textures and the patterns and the art of it. This project now has real chocolate bars. This is, those are mock-ups, but the project exists right now. <laughs> and it's li super delicious, I need to say. And personal projects. Hmm, OK. This project, is just, this is just a working title because I don't know if this name is good enough and, and I frankly don't know if probably this project is going to get cancelled because I, it's, it's super, it was, it's harder than I was expecting, so maybe it's not going to happen, but still I believe that it's a good thing to put it here because this is how I start things and then my heart gets broken and, and I just stop to working in this and do a new one. So, but it started like this. So, nurses like it's it's one. It's intended to be a, a, like a fashion brand, um, inspired by simplicity because I like simplicity. But the problem with the simplicity is like it, it become it's 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 dangerous because simplicity could be become brandless, and if it's brandless, any fast fashion can replace it. Um, for ex for example, I like acne as a brand, but when I enter to the store and it's like a plain t-shirt that I say, okay, this is a plain t-shirt that I like, and then if they charge me $400 for it, I will, I will go directly to an H&M and buy a black t-shirt, you know? So the thing is how to make a fashion brand that is simple, but not that easily to replace. So we use this visual, con this visual concept that is based on language. Uh, everyone's language, writing system. So it bends the most used script systems into one unique alphabet. And for me, it speaks about the moment that we are living, like the world is shrinking, uh, internet, etc., etc. Migration, huge topic. And we started to do stuff like this. Again, this is just a work in progress. This is not even finished. I don't love that much the design of it. But this is how everything starts. Like the taco place was like that, and like this at, at one moment, and everything else that I have been doing, and other, and that I am doing, it starts like this, like a PowerPoint and, uh, and an idea. So this is like the kind of the layout that we are using with this, with this like type on it. And one second. Uh, okay. Like that, so it, you can use it like, as, like a pattern or like text and, and things. You can be very elegant using it little, or you can be super tacky using it huge, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is just a work in progress. So this is still in very early phase, or maybe this is going to be the end of it, like an early phase that never bloomed to nothing, because I'm still looking for the right time. Uh, but like every other project that I've talked about, I, I can do it on my own. I, I need to, found, to find someone that is better than me and more passionate about having a fashion brand than me. And so in that way, we can start. And this is the last one, the movie. I have been spending a lot of time, effort, years, uh, a lot into this project. And it's, it's a full feature film. Um, and it's beautiful because this sums up everything, like design, like the fashion design, makeup design, whatever, uh, like photo, uh, music. It has everything combined into just one thing. It, it's, a, it's a big, big effort. The movie is so little, but the effort is so epic and super interesting because I don't know nothing about movies. And, but now I'm directing and writing one. Um, so the movie has been filmed right now, and it's in the editing room. 
do some sort of quick pictures of it. Someday it's going to be released next year. Oh, beautiful. This is Mexico. <sighs> then this is Mexico as well. And this is Mexico as well. Uh, okay, conclusions. So you don't need to choose what you want to do in your life. Because when you're surrounded with the right kind of people, you can literally do anything. Here is what I look for. Uh, first of all, energy. Look for people that mot motivate you to keep being motivated. Never drag anyone with you. It's like... Oh. <laughs> Sorry. And diversity. Partnering with your best friend, with your best creative friend is amazing, but <laughs> maybe it's better to work with people that likes to open Excel or knows how to cook or whatever. It depends on what you want to do. Most of the time, it's amazing to have actual adults taking care of serious things. Um, share. This is for me an important topic as well. Some, sometimes letting someone else to be the leader, it's, it's better. Some of us are just turbochargers, not motors. Um, I mean, I found the company that is not run by me anymore because I know that I am not as good as Danny's. And principles. This means like different talents, but same values. You're looking for the same values. So in that, in that way, everybody is pushing in the same direction. Um, skills. Respect the expertise and spe specialization. For me, that's a very important thing. Mike, my partner that is a design genius, um, he only, only do that, logos. But he has a big share of the company because he is just super talented. And, and that, that's how I can be sure that our studio is going to be better and better and better and better and better. And this one, I don't know here, but in Mexico, this thing is not that easy. Trust. It's the most basic value in a human relationship. Without trust, it's impossible to share anything. So trust, probably, it's the most important thing. And I still don't know what to do with my life. And I still don't have a direction. But I know that with the right people, I will have more fun, and I will get there sooner. This is the options that I have at the beginning. And I'm doing everything. So this is the lecture going fast and over. This is my studio profile, etc. social media if you want to follow us. And this is my personal. So thank you very much. <laughs>